Welcome to Food Talk, where we talk about food, fishing, farming, and all things East End. Today, my guest is Bill Valentine of uh, Valentine Consulting. Um, Bill, it's so good to have you here. We've, uh, uh, we have a long history. Um, Absolutely. You are one of the iconic East End chefs, if you really think about it, which goes back to your days at the Maidstone Arms, um, where you were the GM and the chef. That's right. Um, but you have a rich resume even before you came to the East End. Just tell us a little bit about, um, uh, about your, your roots is, and how you got involved in cooking and where, where your, your cooking life has taken you, because it's a great story. Yeah, well, um, my family owned a restaurant when I was a kid, and uh, my uncle, um, uh, Italian restaurant. In, in Smithtown? In Smithtown, yeah. yeah, yeah. The building's still there. It's another restaurant now. Um, and uh, I decided to become a cook at an early age. And... Um, through that, I went to uh, Johnson & Wales uh, um, College and uh, uh, ended up in New Orleans for 10, altogether 10 years. And where did so, you cook in New Orleans? Uh, a lot of places. Um, the Royal Orleans Hotel, um, a, a northern Italian place called um, Andrea's, um, a few uptown restaurants, um, Clancy's, and... Uh, um, I forget the name of the other one, yeah. but the but the big one was the right. Windsor Court right. Hotel, where I you know I I really saw what really quality food and and uh, preparation was all about. Yeah, it's a great city. I've been there once. I'd like to go back again. But then you also how did you got out to L.A. Right, and you were at the Checkers. Yep, Checkers Hotel. Yep. And and what was the name of the restaurant there? Um, what was the name of the restaurant there? I don't know. It slips my mind, but. Um, uh, and that was a great restaurant. That was my first executive chef job. Did you um, replace Thomas Keller? I did. That, so this is a great I story. So, so I did. how did this happen? This uh, is a man that replaced Thomas Keller. You got to be kidding me. Well, uh, I guess back in the day, Thomas was. This was early '90s, I guess. Maybe late. It doesn't matter. Uh, early '90s, I'll say. And uh, Thomas was uh, a lot younger than he is now, and a lot less experienced. And I guess he had. Um, he didn't run his kitchen business-wise as well as he should have. Right. I guess maybe that's what the story is. Right. Um, but anyhow, they were they were unhappy. Um, they weren't unhappy with his food, but they were unhappy with uh, probably the cost of the kitchen. And um, they brought me in. I guess uh, being my first executive chef job, um, I was kind of uh, coming out of New Orleans, kind of um, doing well. And um, uh, my chef in New Orleans, a great mentor of mine, uh, Kevin Graham. Uh, said to me one day, um, Billy, it's time for you to leave. And I said, oh, you fire me again, chef? <laughs> and uh, he said, no, you're, you're ready to go, and I've got an opportunity for you that I want you to listen to, and I want wow. you to call this man. And uh, so I did, and a few months later, I was on my way out to L.A. How long were you and, in L.A.? Uh, um, about two years. Did you like living in L.A.? I loved it. Really? I loved it. Um, you know, you can be at the beach uh, and, and leave the beach and within 20 minutes be in the mountains and, and see snow, you know. It, it's, it's a pretty incredible place. And uh, back then I liked to ride motorcycles, so it fit really, really well. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, Good yeah. for you. Yeah. Um, after uh, L.A., I, I came back here to uh, the Maidstone Arms, and um, I was there for eight years. And uh, I was kind of starting to get burnt out, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and... Um, my child was born, uh, my son, and I wanted to do something where I wouldn't be working. Got a lot of long hours there. Yeah, yeah a lot of uh, working as much. And so I decided to open my, my own business. It um, had nothing to do with cooking. And, right. Uh, the, uh, yeah, I had a, a motorcycle. My passion was motorcycles, and uh, I tried to get a, a run at that. And I had some great times, rode some great bikes, but... Um, that was right uh, over here, that I, right, right I, on Industrial Road. Yeah, right? yeah exactly. Yeah, right down the street. Right. Yeah, this was my uh, my test strip here, right in front. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so uh, that did. I, I found out that I wasn't such a great businessman. So um, I came, I got an offer from a, a gentleman um, out, out here, in, um, um very uh, affluent gentleman who had an idea about uh, cooking and. Believe it or not, it was what Blue, Ra Blue Apron is now. So I kind of I see these Blue Apron advertisements, and I get a little bit uh, because this is this is gourmet food that's been packaged, uh, uh, portioned, and frozen 
but it, it, it just... Ours was fresh. Well, yours was fresh. Ours was fresh, and um, we did little, you know, sizes of things, and, uh, um, and I always use the chicken soup... Um, uh, example. So your husband, your wife and husband are hungry. They both work all day. Um, what do we have for dinner, honey? You go to this this place that we had. We had a store in Manhattan, um, and we also sold wholesale. But we went. Uh, the husband and wife would go to this store, and uh, we want chicken soup. But uh, he likes roasted chicken. She likes grilled chicken. You you could swap that. We had all these different. Uh, ways uh, he likes Southwest, she likes curry. You get a curry packet, he gets a Southwest packet. And, th this, and this company was called Really Cool Foods. It was called Really Cool Foods. And is it still, yeah. in, still in operation? It is not, um, but we had a uh, a seven, eight year run yeah. that was uh, um, it was like meteoric. Yeah, we went straight up to the top. We that. we controlled the whole. Um, uh, um, uh, H, what they call in that business HMR, um, um, ho home meal replacement right. um, in grocery stores. And at, in the beginning, we were organic and natural, uh, as much organic as we could. Um, and it was the right time, and then the, the economy kind of crashed a little bit on us. And that's kind of one of the first things people cut out is expensive food. So mm. um, we started to suffer. But that started right here in Little Ali's Tampton, and that was it actually did. Out, of a, uh, out of a kind of a on garage, in, right? On industrial, um, I'm sorry, uh, on uh, Plank Road. Right, 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 right. right yeah, right. another industrial building. It's unbelievable. I had, that was the best kitchen ever. <laughs> really cool foods. And then um, how's Valentine Consulting going? It's going well. It's Good. going well. It's Good. it's um, it's been five years now, and it's uh, uh, getting the business in. You've helped me out tremendously. You've gotten me two two really really great clients that keep coming back. Luigi's and, uh, New Hyde Park. Yeah, it's a great restaurant. Fantastic. You guys, if you're ever in New Hyde Park, there's this little sleeper of a restaurant that's also a pizzeria. Yep. But this is an Italian restaurant called Luigi's. The place rocks. There's some of the best orchietti with with sauces. Yep. The guy goes to Italy, goes in the kitchen, kind of shakes the, sh the the chef down. We'll fly the chef over, have him do the recipe. And this is a little, you know, just you, you, if yeah. you're driving on is that Union Turnpike, Union Turnpike, you're on yeah, Union Turnpike right. in, in in New Hart Park. You're driving like, ah, oh, you know, another another spaghetti joint. No, no, Luigi's. It's, yeah. it's a good place. Yeah, he, uh, he, they they make their they make their own pasta. They make mozzarella maybe three times a day. They make oh, wow. the, probably the best focaccia I've ever had. Really? Um, what was the other restaurant? Had I to steal that recipe. Um, no, the other uh, was through Mrs. Green's, a grocery store chain, I think. Oh, okay. Um, um, but that you know, in this business that I'm in now, it's it's uh, a lot of it's corporate, yeah. um, and. Uh, the downside of it is, uh, like I went with Mrs. Green's, they, their whole culinary department over the summer kind of quit. Everybody sort of quitting. Yeah. So the first guy cut was, was me, of course, and, or nobody, you know, like I didn't exist without them. Right, so. right, 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 right. So, but we're rebuilding no, that, that account. The, and, and The realities. Uh, yeah, you know, I've got some things going on uh, possibly in Indianapolis. Great. Uh, uh, one of the country's largest... Um, Vegetable cutters, believe it or not, is going to start doing proteins and meals. And um, the guys that cut, uh, you know, you, when you go to the grocery store, you see a crudite platter, right. or you see cut pineapple, fresh cut pineapple in a Costco. So there's a guy that has um, a business that, that just guy does that. Does that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine, right? Yeah, they have uh, twelve plants around the country. Wow. But I, my career has been pretty, pretty strange. A maybe. Cafecito? Sure. We're doing. Uh, Cafe Bustello, the, uh, which we love Hampton Coffee, but we got a little thing for Bustello, just saying. Love it. We love all coffee. Yeah. Um, um, on, that, uh, on, the, on that subject, I mean, uh, we, in Man I've, I've been to small, re I've worked in small restaurants, like tiny restaurants, like Gotro's and up, up, um, Uptown New Orleans was just a, uh, I think, a 30-seater, and we did some really fantastic food out of there. And um, But then I went into this manufacturing um, where um, I was the, for really cool foods, I was the executive chef, but I was in charge of R&D, research and development. And uh, we were doing, just in chicken breast alone, 110,000 pounds a week. 
Okay, 110,000 pounds of chicken breast a That's week. That's two tractor trailer trucks full. Then you got to wonder where those chickens are coming from. Who's, <laughs> how are they growing? Well, we, we went to the farms. We, we Oh, absolutely. When you're buying that much product, you want to make sure that it's the quality and, and uh, that you need. And, and, the, and the chickens and were okay? They were that, treated properly? Yeah, yeah. The, um, they were, it was actually um, refreshing to see that they were. Um, so... Um, that, that was interesting. We had a 45,000 gallon uh, oil silo, too, next oh, to the building. To recycle the oil? Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> so I bumped into John Koalenko from Art of Eating and uh, uh, Hampton Event Planning last night, and he reminded me that you also, he says he's one of the meanest smokers on the East End because sometimes you pitch in at Town Line Barbecue. Yep. And, and just tell me a little bit about that process, what your role is there. I mean, well, this Joe guy does everything, know, folks. Well, Joe, Joe, Joe really Muto and I go way back. You know, I go back with all these grizzly old chefs. Um, you know, we've all been around together for a while, and I, I love Joe, and uh, Joe's a great friend, and he, I'm very much into smoking. I've, I've throughout my career, I've always done some sort of smoking, uh, even back way back in the Maidstone days. Um, so Joe, uh, during, during the summer. Uh, he likes his chef to try to get at least a day off or two, oh. and I spell the chef for two, two, two or three days a, a week, and oh, nice. uh, and I just love it. Yeah, I love it. It's a good I, atmosphere over there. It's really it's good food. Great, though. great food. Um, and you know the smoke. Just running the smoker is just a, it's a completely different mindset. It's. Um, you know, I go in there at seven o'clock in the morning some mornings, and I look out over that cornfield in the back there, and, and it uh, it reminds me like it could be Tuscany. Yes. You know, yeah. this is it's just yeah. gorgeous uh, kind of rolling um, cornfield back there, and and uh, that way the clouds come in and everything. And I start a fire, and it's very primal. And yeah. I don't know, there's yeah. something that clicks inside yeah. your brain when you're doing this. Cooking that, that this meat is, over a fire. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. It's absolutely, absolutely. One of the things I I, I really commend the, the Honest Management Group because they um, they all their meats and and chickens are um, they're all sustainable and um, uh, naturally uh, yep. grown. No no. Uh, 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 hormones or, or pesticides, and you can really taste it in the meat and the, oh, yeah, the, and the yeah. chicken. It makes a big they, they took a big gamble doing that, um, I know especially with barbecue, you know, because <clears throat> barbecue is all about uh, the amount of uh, marbling and fat that's in the meat to keep it moist because they're not, uh, well, traditionally, they're not the, the best cuts. That's why right. they're smoked so right. long and, right. and to tenderize them. Um, but they've worked with their purveyors um, to the point now that they're getting really, really the best... Um, quality meats consistently. In the beginning when they started doing the grass-fed program and then the uh, um, uh, all-natural stuff, it was a, a little bit rocky, but uh, now no worries. Well, speaking of um, keeping it local, I don't know if, if you folks have been driving on the LIE. You and I were talking about this earlier today. So if you're driving east on the LIE, <clears throat> between exit 51 and 52, there's this new Long, Welcome Long Island Center, right? So um, it's a rest stop. You can't get gas there. But so I pulled over. I walked inside. I was blown away by the display of East End products and East End food. Joe and Liza's ice cream, which is uh, our producer uh, Mike's uh, brother. Um, it was there. Tate's cookies were there. Um, Hampton coffee was there. There were other. Uh, there was a honey that I recognized. They sell grass-fed meats um, in a little uh, a container. There's sandwiches that are um, prepared. Um, it's a really well-done rest stop. They have a little Long Island um, a walk of fame where you've got uh, you know, little, little, uh, 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 little things in set of you know, Jerry Seinfeld, Lee Krasner, uh, uh, Jackson Pollock, um, um, Rosie O'Donnell, all the great Long Islanders. It's so well done. Th th somebody was selling Horman's pickles outside. <laughs> Um, it, uh, it's very, very impressive. There's also a whole history of Long Island inside. And um, now I, I just want to stop there uh, just to right, get a little right. bite. And, um, it, it, and it, it connects me to the East End because they're all East End products. It's really amazing. And so I just wanted to put a plug in for that because um, um, it's different and it's new. Well, you really know, Long job. Island has a, a pretty, you know, I think we're underrated um, no, in, in no our, our culinary um, not just culinary, but agriculturally and culinarily. You know, um, not that this is really culinarily, but I grew up in Smithtown, and, and when we were kids, um, I think in elementary school, we took a, uh, a field trip to the North Fork, and it was, um, 
I thought it was Wise, potato <laughs> chips, huh. or Lay's, one of them. There was a factory out here, and we went to the potato chip factory, and that's, you know, all the, all the, uh, that was in, um, you know, I don't, I don't remember, South Holt, it might have been South Holt, um, and uh, there was a functioning Wise, I think it was Wise, because they're out of business now. I don't, I don't see Wise potato chips around anymore. Oh, they're out of business? I, th I don't know. I, I don't huh. see them around anymore. That's but uh, huh. anyway, you know, back back in the day when I used to come out here as a kid, uh, it would be potato fields and cauliflower and broccoli and peaches and not much else. I'm glad we've changed that and diversified to so many great varieties and, and different things that uh, right. we're producing now. Right. So <clears throat> we're going to switch gears. We're going to talk. We have a little uh, uh, Stump the Chef. Uh -oh. <laughs> I've been doing pretty well with Stump the Chef. We burned uh, Sean Christman um, last week, and so we'll try to... Um, we'll see. Actually, Bill has got so much um, international experience. <laughs> Let's see if he knows what Pashka is. I think Pashka is uh, some sort of like uh, herb paste or a spice paste mixture. That's my guess. Pashka. Uh, um, it is a Russian <laughs> sweet cheese mold. Oh, my God. Traditionally served. A mold. A mold. Thanks. Served at Easter. It consists of a combination of sweetened pot cheese or cottage cheese, yep. nuts, usually almonds, and candied or dried fruit. Hmm. Classically, this mixture is molded into the shape of a four-sided pyramid then the pasca, <laughs> pasca is, is decorated with nuts or candy to form the letters <coughs> XB, which stands for Christ is Risen. This is a, this is a big Easter wow. situation. Wow. Pashka. Food Talk wins again. Food Lover's Companion is my tool. That was easy. All right. Wow. So just tell me this. What are the three best things that you've done in your life? Oh, wow. Wow. Um, well, having my son. I was just gonna. I knew you were gonna say that. That's number That's a one. Good answer. It's mine too. Um, probably moving to New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you said best things. Yeah. Well, you got two. That's well, I actually I was uh, Prince Philip's private chef, um, and it was the setting was Eleuthera Bahamas. You can't get much better than that. Had <laughs> so. a good life. Yeah, I've, I've had, had some, a good rich I've life. Been very lucky and. All right. So. In this life, if you were to have uh, five people that you were going to invite to dinner, in the, in the whole history of the world, who would they be? Well, that's another tough one. You know, I, I watch some of the shows, so I'd be ready for this. Um, My favorite question. Uh, We've got some it great is. answers. Uh, a lot of people, um, you know, I started thinking, of, you had said to me, I might ask you this question. So on the car ride home yesterday, I was thinking about it, and um, I thought of my grandfather. And then when I got home, I watched a lot of your back shows, and a lot of people said their grandfather. Yeah. So I think only because I never really, you know, my, my mom's dad, my grandfather on my mom's side, um, died when I was 12, I think. So I never got to know him as an adult. I never got to ask him questions, you know, and he was a really cool guy. This guy from Sicily came over, and uh, that's one. Um, yeah, that, well, actually, that's two, because my dad's father, too. I, I, I never really got to talk to him as right. an adult. Two grandfathers. Yeah. Um, I think Mark Messier, because I'm a big Ranger oh, fan. God help and, us. Uh, no, Can we come edit on. that out? Come on. Right. I mean, one of the greatest hockey players ever to live, and I'm a huge good. hockey fan. You know that. Um, Phil and I are in a hockey pool. Um, I'm the commissioner. I'm an Islander fan. He's the commissioner. He's a <laughs> Ranger fan. I have drafted two Rangers I also have John Tavares. I drafted Rick Nash and um, uh, Kreider. What's Kreider's first name? Chris, Chris Kreider. Um, it feels weird to own Rangers and to root for Rangers. Do you have any Islanders? Until on they start scoring. I know. Do you have any Islanders? Um, Come on. No, not not not. But only because it just didn't happen yet. Yeah. Last year I, I had a couple Islanders. Yeah. And they did well for me. Yeah, that's the, they did because we're a good team. Well, they, you were a good team last year. We'll right. see what we'll happens. We'll see what happens. Every year's a new year. <laughs> but that, the hockey the hockey action is good. It's good. We might do a trade. We've actually come up with the possibility of a trade here on the yeah. air. Trades don't happen that much early. No, I know. Oh, so we actually yeah, got two grandfathers. What else you got? Uh, I think Joe Strummer, um, the uh, lead singer of The Clash. <laughs> uh, this, is a, this is good. Well, Joe, well, Joe Strummer was yeah. a great, great uh, well, not only The Clash, he had other bands. And uh, he, uh, I've always loved his singing, but I always liked his views on things, too. He thought outside the box. He and, did. And wasn't his, and, um, was his father a, a diplomat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A Turkish, Turkish diplomat, I think. From Britain to Turkey. Yeah. yeah. Um, he grew up in Turkey. Really? Or 
until he was like five or something. Um, I've always uh, loved him. And uh, who's number five? His music. Yeah, you know. Another New York Ranger? No, Just no, kidding. no, 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 no. I think somebody I'd like, you know, like I'm a little bit more cerebral than that. Um, um, you know, I, I, Tesla comes to mind, or or um, or um, oh, it's, uh, E equals M C C squared. What, Einstein? Uh, yes, yes. Einstein. Yes. Okay, so, so Einstein, yes. Joe Strummer. Yeah. Mark Messier. It's a weird table. Two grand, this is but a good you know, table. Well, they, they, it's for me, so no, I, no, I no, want to no, no, hear entitled. what Einstein has no, to say. No, this is good. This know. may be one of our top five you know. because um, <laughs> it's just a good combo. Kate Baldwin from um, Amber Waves had, had some interesting ones. I've, I've forgotten a couple of them, but they were, they were good. So listen, let's switch seats because you're going to make some um, local squash soup, right? Yep, yep. Um, Come on Ian, up. Ian from Balsam Farms hooked us up. He was some, here last week. Some really good uh, different squashes. Good. And um, the way I I do this simply, like, um, you know, you roast your acorn squash um, with some garlic and butter and some maple syrup yeah. and brown sugar and a few <clears throat> herbs. And uh, you can eat it just like that for a side, or you can take all that flesh out of the, out of the, um, uh, the squash themselves and... Um, um, puree it, like I have here, and I put a little bit of um, uh, chestnuts in it. So do you know? So these are all from 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 balsam. Yeah, all from balsam. There's um, <clears throat> um, cheese pumpkin, butternut, uh, acorn, and a curry, which was interesting. First time I worked with that uh, red curry. And uh, we've got thyme, rosemary, um, two different types of thyme. Or is yeah, lemon thyme and. Uh, and, some uh, chestnuts. I'm sorry, regular thyme, chestnuts. Yeah, a little sour cream. Is that yeah. what that is? You want to put some chestnuts on there? Sure, I'm, I'm part and of the dollop. I, um, this is all made with. Uh, sorry, buddy. Um, all made with uh, vegetable stock, so it's vegetarian. And uh, I got a little yogurt there to. Uh, oh, yogurt. Or, it's not, yeah, the yogurt's better than it didn't look. Like I mean, sour you could cream. you could cream it. You could. Uh, oh, yogurt's better. Mascarpone it. You could, you know, just something creamy on there is usually nice. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, we've got a garnish. Oh, I'll just toss a few. I love fresh thyme. Oh, there's fresh nothing thyme. like it. Fresh thyme nut. I'm a cilantro fan, too. Oh, like yeah. Cilantro? I love it. Cilantro. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Great. All right. So, um, now, we're not supposed to really, like, um, Eat, right? Which I've been guilty of. So we had to change the I rules block here. But, oh yeah, <laughs> please. If you want, I could block you from the camera. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> oh boy, that is delicious. There's so many different flavors in there. What's in this again, Bill? Well, the, the squash was amazing. Um, acorn squash, butternut squash. Well, I just take the seeds out. I don't know if the camera can see it. Um, and I just cook them. I put a little bit of butter, a bit of pat of butter in each one, a clove of garlic in each one, mm. some herbs. You can use brown sugar, maple syrup, salt, pepper. Very simple. It's very, very good. Wow. Thanks. And of course, this is one of those times where I just really want to glom it, you know. But we'll, just, we'll, we'll wait till after the show. Yeah, healthy that. breakfast. Yeah, right? Oh, it'd be wonderful. Um, so. What else, Bill? What else? You find yourself going up to Vermont. Um, my son, okay. my my son lives in Vermont. Right. Oh, and yep. Any? Um, have you found any food stops along the way? To, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so tell me about those. I actually found a really good barbecue place. Along really. The way in Vermont, who would who would think? Uh, it's called Root Root Four Country Store, and it's right by the. Um, just inside of Vermont, um, the White River Junction. Sure. Is that, that yeah, yeah, I know all, the, all the interstates kind of come together. Right on the border of, of, of New Hampshire and Vermont. Right, right. Oh, it's right time. It's right there. Uh, I guess near Stowe, right? Is mm -hmm. it Stowe? I think area? So. Um, that's a great place. What's that, what's that Route 4? Route 4 Country Store. Um, the reason why I, I just pulled off to get gas and I was driving down the road. You know how sometimes you're searching for gas or a place that looks good to get something to eat or something. Right. And I see this kind of dumpy little place, uh, these bear carvings out in front of it and all this. And But what attracts me and, and what I always see, 
even in people's backyards, I saw this big drum. <laughs> you knew and, what that was. And there was smoke coming out of it, and I said, oh, my God, look at that. And it was huge. The, um, it must, it must, I think they custom build it now, but the woman I talked to her, she said that her husband had made it out of a, like an 800-gallon oil uh, drum. Like an oil, oil, like a, a, a oil like, storage, right, yeah. right. Well, right, you right. keep, you know, oil at your house, and um, they do brisket, ribs. I haven't had anything but the brisket, and it's always been good. So, and, is this one uh, of those places that you you, you can get it on a bulky? Uh, what's a bulky? A bulky is like a, um, I think it's a regional, um, like soft, like we have. Uh, hard rolls. Okay, right. Well, we, you know, Kaiser right, roll. Right. But we would say, oh, long I would right. say, oh, on a hard roll. Right, 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 right. right. Well, uh, they have uh, what they call a bulky, and it's a soft little uh, roll up there. And uh, I don't put anything on it, just the brisket and salt and pepper. And nice. That's it. Yeah. I love uh, regional dining. One of my favorite uh, uh, products uh, in uh, in New England is Moxie. The, the great yeah. drink that's actually yeah. made by Coca-Cola. Yeah. I, I used to be addicted to that stuff. I'm now, I'm off the Moxie. Um, I went to Moxie Anonymous actually um, to no, but it's, it's very <laughs> yeah. They said it's, I see awesome. it's, yeah, it's that, an acquired taste. Yep. There's a Moxie Festival right uh, second Saturday in in um, in July up in now, Maine. Now is that coffee? Is it a coffee? Soda? It's a coffee. It's a, it's a Coca Cola product. Right. Um, that's got some herbs and, and, and like bark. In yeah, it. it tasted it tasted like. Um, Jägermeister with carbonation and out yeah, yeah, alcohol. It's nasty stuff. It's, but it's, it's a, well, like you said, it's an acquired taste. Uh, quick thing. We've got about 45 seconds left. If you wanted to make this at home, yes. tell us how to do it quickly. Roast your squash. Seed your squash. Yep. Um, roast them. Cut them so they're, they're stable. Um, garlic in each one. Herbs in each one. Butter in each one. Uh, a little bit of uh, brown sugar. Roast them till they're done. I did it at 300 degrees for over an hour. They have to be nice and soft. Pull out the flesh. Puree the flesh. You can add cream, stock, nice. whatever. It's, it's so very simple. simple. Very simple. Good thing for a And Sunday chestnuts. Yeah, you can buy chestnuts. some chestnuts. And well, the most versatile chef on the, on the East End, maybe. Um, <laughs> thank you for everything, guys. Uh, coge lo suave, pero coge lo. Take it easy, but take it from Food Talk here at LTV. Thanks for coming on, Bill. Hasta la pasta. Yes, hasta la pasta.